We welcome all of you to the Eucharistic celebration at St. Andrew's Parish in Sun. Today is the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the first reading, the Lord invites us to come to Him and our soul will live. The second reading tells us that nothing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ. And in the Gospel, Jesus feeds all those who come to Him. He feeds us in a special way when we come to receive Him in the Eucharist. He becomes present to us in His very Self. May we receive this gift of Himself with great joy and gratitude. Let us stand to welcome our celebrant Father Joe and join in the entrance here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we have come together to celebrate the Holy Mass, let us look into ourselves and be sorry for all our sins and failures, and ask the Lord his forgiveness and pardon. Today I would like to offer this Holy Mass for the souls of Tony Lobo on the occasion of his 40th day, Babu, Irene and Antonin Lamellati, Joseph Patrick, Maria, Reverend Sister Victoria, Una Shegara and Suri. We ask the Lord to grant them eternal rest and peace. And acknowledging our own sinfulness, we all say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And we give glory to God by singing together.
Let us pray. Draw near, near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness. That for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you, I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response is, the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand, the hand of, of the Lord, Lord feeds us. us. He, he answers, answers all our needs. needs. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. Response? The hand, the hand of, the of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. Response? The hand, the hand of, of the Lord, Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways, and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, call on him from their hearts. Response? The, the hand, hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked, these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, nor any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to welcome the Gospel. No one lives on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Halle, halle, halle.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by boat into a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But the people heard of this and leaving the towns went after him on foot. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples went to him and said, This is a lonely place and the time has slipped by. So send the peoples away and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have with us is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. He gave orders that the people were sit down on the grounds. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven and set the blessing. And breaking the loaves, he handed them to the disciples, who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps remaining, tall baskets full. Those who ate numbered about 5,000 men, to say nothing of women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear friends, the Greek philosopher Plato lived during the 4th century BC. He had many profound sayings. And one of them is this, he said, wise men speak because they have something to say, whereas fools speak because they have to say something. And on the topic of speaking, Plato also said, be kind because everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Yes, we will never know what is happening behind the facade of every person. You know, at times, what we say as a joke may not be that funny to the other person. I remember once one of my friends who was a bachelor then told me, my old aunties used to come up to me at the weddings poking me at my ribs and saying, you are the next. He said he was not always comfortable with that. After a while, he found out how to put, it to, put an end to it. So at the funerals, he would go up to these aunties and whisper at, into their ears, you are the next. So whether it is weddings or at funerals, it is wise not to use words like you are next, be it for better or for worse. Whatever it may be, it is always good to be kind because everyone you meet is fighting some sort of battles in their lives. In the Gospel passage today, we heard about the miraculous multiplication of laws that fed the crowd of 5,000 men. But we must not miss the account before that, before the whole incident of the multiplication of bread. You know, the, today's Gospel passage began by saying that Jesus received the news of the death of John the Baptist and he withdrew to a lonely place. The news about the death of 
John the Baptist must have shaken him and he wanted to be alone for himself for some time. The news of the death of John the Baptist was like telling him, you are the next. Obviously, the crowds did not know what was happening with him and the battle he was fighting within himself. They went after him on foot and so he stepped ashore. He saw a large crowd searching for him. But despite his need for solitude and to think about the things and to mourn the death of John the Baptist, what happened was Jesus took pity on the crowds and he healed their sicknesses. And then when evening came, another situation arose. His disciples asked him to send the crowds away so that they can get some food for themselves. After all, he had already done enough for the crowds and they should leave him alone now. What else could they expect of him? His own needs were not met and he was not obliged to see to their every need. That is the general understanding. But it was a lonely place and that crowd of 5,000 men was getting hungry and all they had was only five loaves and two fish. Obviously, it was not enough. Obviously, there is nothing that the disciples could do about the hungry situation. And here is where we must believe that when we can't do anything at all by ourselves, then God can do something. As the second reading puts it, nothing can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even at being attacked. Because these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. Or in other words, God will fight our battles for us. And he can only fight our battles for us when we listen to those words of Jesus that he told his disciples. Those words that he said to his disciples. He said, bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. Jesus said that without him we can do nothing. But it is also means that with him we can do anything, we can do everything. Yes, God will fight our battles for us. And this is very much reiterated by the prophet Isaiah when he told the king Ahaz as he was surrounded by his enemies, stand by your God or you will not stand at all. All we need to do is to listen to what Jesus said. Bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. Others may not know the, the, the hard battles that we are fighting. But God knows that he, and he will fight our battles for us. In turn, God wants us to help others fight their battles because they may not know that God wants to fight their battles for them. So like Jesus, we need to be kind and compassionate to others because they have battles to fight every day. And just like Jesus, even though he had his own needs, he took, the, he took on the needs of others and helped them fight their battles. For all we know, when we take on the needs of others, and fight their battles, our own needs will be met and God will win our battles for us. And we pray for that grace today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We all stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to mate, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and abode his spirit. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, nothing can come between us and the love of God. With the confidence, let us bring our prayers before God, who answers all our needs. For those who lack food and clothing, that nations with abundant resources will come to their aid with urgency. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that during times of trial, it will show forth the love of God, acting with kindness and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, that the love of God will be their constant strength and companion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, that we will become more conformed to Christ by sharing our gifts and talents with our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all families, communities and nations that are struggling with the coronavirus and the restrictions. That the Holy Spirit will bring comfort and that they may feel the blessing of God's love for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick and those names that are mentioned in the news bulletin. May the risen Lord heal them and restore their health. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the faithful departed, especially Aloma Moira, Alfie Coco, Joe Trinidad, who died recently, and for all those whose names are mentioned in the news bulletin, and all the souls in purgatory whose memories are sacred at this time. May they rejoice in the company of the risen Lord in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Also in a moment of silence, we pray for our personal intentions. And offering all our intentions, both expressed or unexpressed, we say together the prayer, Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, heaven women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by his birth he brought a renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without the end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took a bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of The 
us we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Peter Common Soli our Archbishop, and all the clergy and faithful. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. Andrew, and all the saints, who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our lives, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and failures, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with the constant protection, O Lord, those who you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.